Progressive Stages of Meditation on Emptiness, by Venkenpo Tsultram Jiamso Rinpoche, translated and arranged by Shenpen Hook M. Stage 3, Savantantrika Approach The Tibetan tradition divides the Madhyamaka into the Madhyamaka Self-Empty, Rangtong, and the Madhyamaka Other Empty, Shentong. There are two kinds of Madhyamaka Rangtong, 1. Madhyamaka Svatantrika, 2. Madhyamaka Prasangika. Although the term Shentong was coined in Tibet, Madhyamaka Shentong represents the views of those whom, in India, were known as the Yogacara Madhyamikas. The purpose of the Madhyamaka Rangtong is to establish the emptiness of self-nature of all phenomena, dharmas. When we were considering the Sittamatra system we saw there were three kinds of emptiness. The emptiness of the imaginary nature, the emptiness of the dependent nature and the emptiness that is the truly existent nature. We saw that the emptiness of the imaginary nature meant that when an imaginary object is closely scrutinized it is found not to exist at all, except in the imagination. In particular it refers to the emptiness or absence of self-entity in the person and outside objects, in other words they never existed as real entities except in the imagination. On the other hand we saw that the emptiness of the dependent nature, which in Sitramatra refers chiefly to the mind stream, meant it was empty of the imaginary nature but not of its own nature. This is the point that Madhyamikas refute. They do not consider the ultimate emptiness, Parinis Punna, found by the Sittamatrins to be ultimate emptiness at all. In their opinion the Sittamatran analysis does not go far enough. The Sravakas, the Sittamatrins, and the Madhyamaka Rangtong Pa, i.e. those who follow Madhyamaka Rangtong, all agree that the mind is a stream of moments of consciousness. The Sravakas analyze it and find no self in it. The Sittamatrins further analyze the objects of consciousness and find no self-nature in them. The Madhyamaka Rangtong further analyzes the consciousnesses as well as their objects and finds that neither consciousnesses nor their objects have self-nature. Nevertheless, all Madhyamikas agree that the mind appears as a stream of moments of consciousness together with their objects, and that this simple appearance is relative truth. It is not absolute. Both Sravakas and Sittamatrins think the moments of consciousness of the mind stream are absolute in some sense, because in the final analysis one always experiences mind as something real. The Madhyamaka Rangtong uses reason to establish that consciousnesses and their objects cannot be ultimately real, because in the final analysis each arises only in dependence on the other and neither has a self-nature of its own. This approach is a very powerful and profound way of establishing the emptiness of all relative phenomena that arise from causes and conditions in mutual dependence, Pratityasamutpada. It leaves many questions unanswered, however, and in some ways the Sittamatra system gives more answers to how relative reality works than does the Madhyamaka Rangtong. Madhyamaka Rangtong is a system of reasoning that takes our everyday common sense view of the world and shows us that such a view of the world is full of logical contradictions. We experience the world through our senses and yet when we use our reason to inquire minutely into the exact mode of its existence we find nothing exists by self-nature at all. Ultimately experience and reason are found to be in fundamental conflict and the resolving of the conflict can only come through the direct knowledge that arises from insight meditation. Thus the aim of all Madhyamaka systems is to clarify awareness by exhausting the reasoning mind and helping it give up its preconceived ideas concerning the nature of world. The difference between the Madhyamaka Svatantrikas and the Madhyamaka Prasangikas is that the former use arguments to refute the self-nature of phenomena, dharmas, and then further arguments to establish their true nature is emptiness. The Prasangikas only use arguments to refute self-nature, without trying to establish the true nature by reasoning at all. Thus the Svatantrikas first establish that dharmas do not truly exist, in other words, that they have no self-nature. Then they establish that in fact their true nature is emptiness. Their arguments are very effective in refuting certain Hindu ideas according to which things do not have self-nature because their true nature is God. To say something has no self-nature means it has no separate independent, lasting nature of its own. For example a rainbow appears very vividly and arises from the coming together of causes and conditions such as the sky, the rain, 
the sun, the angle of the light, and so on. However, when one looks closely for its ultimate nature, one finds empty space. It is as if it had disappeared under one's eyes, and yet it is still there shining brightly in the sky. In the same way scientists study physical things like, for example flowers. The first rough analysis breaks a flower up into its parts, petals, stamens etc. More refined analysis breaks it down into cells, molecules, then atoms, then subatomic particles. Finally those subatomic particles themselves lose their identity and become simple movement in empty space and the ultimate nature of that movement defies rational analysis. Yet the flower remains as vivid and obvious as ever. One has to accept, therefore, that there are two truths, the relative and the absolute. The relative is how things appear to the non-critical ordinary consciousness and the absolute is the ultimate nature of a thing that is established through accurate and minute analysis by means of the rational mind. This is the Svetantrika view. The relative is merely concepts, Ranam Nag Gis Tags Potsam, and the absolute is emptiness free from concepts. The dream example in a dream the ultimate nature of the various things that manifest is emptiness, because none of them is real. They do not have self-nature in the sense that, for example the dream fire does not have the nature of fire i.e. it cannot really burn anything. It is not created from the coming together of causes and conditions such as wood and matches etc. Likewise the dream tiger cannot really bite and does not arise from the coming together of its mother and father etc. Thus the fire and the tiger do not have the self-nature of fire or of tiger. They are empty of that nature, and yet they appear and function in the sense that they can cause fear and suffering in the dreamer. Their appearing and functioning is the relative truth, but their absolute reality is emptiness. In the same way, in waking life, relative phenomena appear and perform functions and yet, although they seem to have independent, lasting existence of their own, they have no such self-nature. Their ultimate nature is emptiness. Svatantrikas follow the Buddha's teaching that, all dharmas are emptiness. They take this to be the certain, true, and final teaching of the Buddha concerning the ultimate nature of things i.e. they take it to be a Nitartha teaching. In their opinion, the Buddha's statement, the three realms are merely mind, needs to be carefully explained. In other words it is a provisional, nayartha, teaching. They interpret the statement that everything is mind to mean that the relative is merely concepts. They do not accept, as the Sittamatrins do, that in the ultimate analysis there is a truly existing substance, mind. The point they are criticizing about the Sittamatra is that, since a moment of consciousness arises in dependence on an object of consciousness and vice versa, consciousness cannot exist independently with its own self-nature, so the mind that the Sittamatrins are positing must be relative, not absolute. By arguing in this way the Svantantrikas are more thorough and precise in their analysis of the absolute nature of things. They establish very forcefully that the ultimate nature of all relative dharmas is emptiness because they are all merely concepts. Even concepts such as emptiness itself can be established as being empty. Although some Svatantrikas teach the two truths as quite separate and different in nature, others stress that they are inseparable both being different aspects of a single reality. The former are stressing that emptiness means absolute non-existence and that all that we experience as existing is relative truth. The latter are stressing that even though this is true, emptiness and appearance cannot ultimately be two separate entities. Ultimately the true nature of things cannot be conceptualized as either existent, non-existent, both or neither. Such a view is very close to the prasangika view. The main difference is that prasangikas do not use logical argument to establish the absolute empty nature of the dharmas, whereas svatantrikas do. Method of investigation Svatantrikas use many detailed arguments for establishing their position. The object is to establish the emptiness of all elements of existence, and the method is systematically to examine each element of existence in turn until one reaches the conviction that all without exception are empty. 
In the Prajnaparamitha Sutras the Buddha lists 108 emptinesses starting with the 18 elements and including all phenomena up to the 10 powers and the omniscient wisdom of the Buddha. In Buddhist philosophy the elements of existence are classified in several different ways, each system purports to cover all possible elements of existence or experience. The idea is to have a kind of checklist of all possible phenomena and then to examine them all to find their ultimate true nature that is common to them all. We have already seen how the five skandhas are used in this way. Now we are going to use the 18 elements as another example of this method. The 18 elements are, I, form, I consciousness. Ear, sound, ear consciousness. No smell, nose consciousness. Tongue, taste tongue consciousness. Body touch, body consciousness. Mind, mental objects, mind consciousness. In this list the six sense organs, eye etc., refer to the actual sensitive part of each organ that links the physical or mental object to the consciousness. Eye consciousness cannot arise simply in the presence of form, the light sensitive organ has also to be present and functioning. The mind organ is the moment of consciousness that bears the image of a sense consciousness or a mental object and enables a conceptual consciousness to grasp it. Nagarjuna was the great founder of the Madhyamaka system. In his Malamadhyamakakarikas he sums up his system of reasoning. His disciple Buddhapalita wrote a famous commentary on this, but his contemporary, Bhavavivka criticized his method and established a system of his own, again based on the Karakas. In this way he became the founder of the Svatantrika Madhyamaka. Khandrakirti, a follower of Buddhapalita wrote a treatise defending Buddhapalita and arguing against Bhavavivka's critique of his work. In this way he became the founder of the Prasangika Madhyamaka. So what kind of reasoning did Nagarjuna use to establish the emptiness of all dharmas? We have not got time to go into them all here. In fact, for the meditator it is not really necessary to know them all. One just has to know enough to be able to establish the emptiness of all dharmas for oneself as a preparation for the meditation. One of the most powerful arguments he used was the argument against a phenomenon being either single or multiple. Taking each element in turn, he asked if it could be said to exist as a single entity or an entity made up of parts. It is taken as axiomatic that anything that exists must be either single or multiple, since no other possibility exists. Take, for example a form such as the hand. If it were single it could not be divided, since it can be divided it must be multiple. However, once you have divided the hand into its parts, where is the hand? One does not find a hand as such, so the hand cannot exist, it is neither single nor multiple. Hand is nothing in itself. It has no self-nature. It is simply a concept. You may think to yourself that although it is true that there is no hand as such, there are the atoms that make up the hand. However, an atom has to be either single or multiple. If it were single it could not have dimensions. To have dimensions means it has a left and a right side etc. One can find all the parts, but then where is the atom itself? However minutely one analyzes, one can never arrive at a smallest possible existent particle of which all other existent things could be said to be made up. Nagarjuna used reasoning to establish this, modern day scientists are coming to the same conclusion using experiments. Maybe we find the experimental evidence more convincing than Nagarjuna's reasoning. It does not really matter which method one uses if the conclusion is the same. Nagarjuna applied the same argument to mental phenomena. Mental phenomena are experienced by the mind. Is a moment of experience single or multiple? If it is neither it cannot truly exist. If it were single it would not be able to have any duration. Duration means there is a beginning, middle and end. If you say there is a beginning, middle and end to a moment, then the moment is three moments and the original moment has disappeared. Therefore it cannot be either single or multiple. However minutely you analyze you never find a smallest possible truly existent moment of experience of which all other existent experience could be made up. Consciousness or experience is empty of self-nature, because ultimately there is no truly existing moment of consciousness or experience. 
Svatantrikas like to use two main types of argument. One is the argument used above i.e. neither single nor multiple and the other is mere dependent arising, Pratite Yasamutpada. What is dependently arising by definition has no self-nature. Therefore to show all phenomena are dependently arising is to show they have no self-nature. Meditation Procedure In the Sittamatra meditation, we saw that the thing that was empty, Stongzi, was the mind, empty of mind slash matter duality. In the Svatantrika meditation the thing that is empty is all phenomena, inner and outer, i.e. both mental phenomena as well as outer appearing objects. Everything is empty of self-nature. NB. Some Svatantrikas take outer appearing objects to be different in substance to the mind and some do not, but all agree that both outer perceived objects and inner perceiving consciousnesses are empty of self-nature. None of them accept, as Siddhamatins do, that dependently arising phenomena have a kind of true existence. Begin the meditation session with taking refuge and arousing bodhisiddha. Then, having established certitude by listening, studying and reflecting, abandon all doubts and rest the mind in its own emptiness and the emptiness of all phenomena free from all concepts such as existence, non-existence and so on. Rest the mind in that vast open space, and, just as when one recognizes dreams for what they are they disappear, so everything disappears into the vast expanse of emptiness when one meditates free from conceptual contrivance, nisprapanka. Between sessions meditate on how things vividly appear but are empty and how, though empty, they appear, as dreams appear even though they are empty. This emptiness is the nature of the Buddha's dharmakaya and also the ultimate nature of all beings. Because of the sameness of nature, beings are able to realize the enlightenment of Buddhas and become Buddhas with the power to work forever at the task of liberating all sentient beings. Thinking of this one dedicates all the merit accumulated through meditating like this to the complete and perfect enlightenment of beings.